bondage video shoot. I've never, mm. I had never done a video shoot. And how I met her is like back in the MySpace days, like MySpace I had moved to Columbia, days. Maryland, and I was a living nanny for a friend of mine, actually. Nice. Was taking care of her son. I was and, a daycare worker too. Go on. Yeah. And I saw this girl on MySpace and I was like, hey, she's got pictures of herself tied up. I was like, I'm into bondage. And Shut I had not up. met any friends outside of like the friends that I had in high school because I was tying yeah. up my friends in high school. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Are you serious? Because my friend was like that, but I never was like that. That's fascinating. (laughs) All right. Pax, you got to sit. You want to be on my podcast? My sexy podcast. You want to be on my sexy podcast? Yeah. Okay, everybody. Welcome. are getting ready to do a podcast with my friend Nisa Never. She's my model friend. And yesterday or the yesterday I did an Instagram that who is your favorite um model to have ever worked for? And several people ask me that and I always say Nisa Nevers. And she's gonna be on my podcast very, very soon. This episode has been brought to you by Slickwood Lube, natural intimate products from slickwood.com. Check them out on YouTube at Slickwood Intimate for six tips on better oral and all about their flavored lube. Follow Slickwood on Twitter at Slickwood. A big shout out to CEO Dean Elliott on Twitter at Slickwood CEO for giving me two different packages of his amazing Slickwood Lube. I also love the Sliquid t-shirts and the fun Sliquid stickers. Thanks from everyone at Maxine X Productions. Here we go. Let's let her in. All right. Now, I am totally trying to figure out this. Okay. I'm still learning. Okay. So I see you, but I wanted to see figure out how I could do... Is there a way to do a split screen? Okay, so there's... Oh, okay, top right corner, there's galley view oh, and got it. view. I figured it out. Hey. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love that room. What is that room? Oh, do you want to really see what it is? It is my messy wardrobe room. However, Are you serious? However, I, I have... The this, lights. I have this room divider that I've put up. Oh, wicked. So How you it hides divider. my dresser and everything. Dude, I would have never known. I thought you just had, like, this wicked, like, studio behind you. Nope. Room divider. You look awesome. Okay. hundred and, I think, 29 bucks, this room divider. And then I have these Philip <laughs> Hue lights that I can control with my phone. I so I just... Mine. I got to dial up. It's fucking covid covid <laughs> so i'm 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 supposedly still in lockdown now i shouldn't be in Wait, lockdown. you have covid no i don't have covid oh. hold on a second i'm just trying to record on my um oh my yeah computer. how do i record on this okay oh, it says record. but now we know <laughs> okay so yeah i'm gonna exit the chat because we don't need the chat yeah we don't need the chat big no. screen oh okay. i can see me yes <laughs> it's working <laughs> so where i want to start is like First of all, we're going to do an introduction of who is Nisa Nevers, okay? Who is Nisa Nevers, and how did we meet? And then we're going to go on with um, kind of like what your projects you've been doing since I've met you, and then since coronavirus. Because to me, it's fascinating right before before coronavirus and how things have totally changed, because it has changed. Oh, Yeah. I haven't even worked. I haven't. I, I used to go, fly to Florida and I used to shoot with other people and visit you. But I used mm-hmm. to shoot with other people and we couldn't do that as soon as like the lockdown happened. We couldn't fly. We can. Nope. And so we were home and everybody's been cooped up. And so many podcasts have started. And even just during the coronavirus. And I've been watching them because everybody's been sitting at home or whatever they're doing. Right. 
Mm-hmm. You're in Florida. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, um, I just everybody in Florida that. has just kind of been doing. Me and Tom Toronto, have actually had to. Toronto right now is in lockdown. I did this podcast with my friend, and I said, and the biggest thing was he was like, "This is what I get all the time. I get this all the time." And they say, "Who is the favorite person that you've ever worked with?" Okay, sometimes I break it down to a guy. Sometimes I break it down to a girl. When it comes down to a girl, I always say Nisa never. Don't even have to think about it. (laughs) I love treating with you. It not makes just, work not work. Yeah, not just that, like, okay, not just that you're my friend, that I like you as my friend, but because I think you're the coolest of all of us. And on top of it, <laughs> you're also hot, of course. Thank but you. on top of it, I that you always you always entertained me with some of the other fetishes you taught me. So there were some things that we did together when we first met. And then, the, and then later on, you're like, Hey, I'm a fetish con. Do you want to join me into this shoot? I have a custom. And I'd be like, what's that? <laughs> what? I have to do this. Wow. Okay. Kick a guy in the nuts. Oh my God. This sounds so fun. <laughs> and I was like, Nisa's is the coolest ever. <laughs> I definitely love to involve my friends. I'm like, all right, we're going to have a good time. Yeah. Make some money. No, seriously, that's how I feel. <laughs> like, Nisa's like, I'd be like, Nisa just invited me to this thing. It sounds really fun. Boom. Gonna always, <laughs> always fun. <laughs> yeah. Always have a good time shooting with you guys, too. When I always say, like, of all the couples in the business, I think you guys are the nicest couple we know. Always happy, well, having you a good time. Too. But... I want people who don't know Nisa to know Nisa. So Nisa, you tell me, first of all, um, how was it um, that you got started as a model? Um, I started modeling when I was really young. And then as I got older, um, like a model or yeah, just like a little fashion modeling. Oh, nice. And then as I got older at 16, I stopped modeling because I just didn't like how I was being treated. And then, Really? Um, Wait, I would love to hear. Like, what what do you mean? What were they treating you as? Just like, you know, I was kind of rebellious, so I didn't like being bossed around at all. Oh, okay. (laughs) That's funny. So, yeah, the way adults would talk to children, I guess I was feeling disrespected. So, I didn't like it. (laughs) No way. That's that's pretty bad. I was like, okay, I'm not going to let anybody boss me around. That's hilarious. When I became an adult, once I was 18, I, I was like, okay, well, I can do it my way. No one's going to boss me. That's pretty good. Good yeah. for you. You know what? A lot of um, young models are not like that. <laughs> yeah, They're I not know. Like that. <laughs> just, just a quick glimpse. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm already in the, when I was already in the MILF stage. I started working for Reality Kings and I was working, I was sitting in the the lobby, the the waiting room. And I heard this woman, she she was like either a manager or some model. I don't know what she was doing. She was an older woman, like about 10 years older than me. And there was a girl who was barely 18, Mm -hmm. that 18, 20 year old kind of look, gorgeous. Um, She could be a runway model. She was gorgeous. And this woman was not attractive and she was going, be glad for the shoot that you have right now, because this could be your only shoot. And I heard this whole conversation she was telling her, you know, you're young. This girl was beautiful. Okay. And this woman was not attractive. So it, to me, it seemed like jealousy. I was her like pimp or something, this older lady manager i'm not sure maybe she ran the um a model house i'm not exactly oh, sure this girl was gorgeous but she didn't know because because when you're that young you don't have the kind of confidence that you have when you get older mm-hmm. and i was listening to this whole conversation the woman she kept kind of eyeing me to see and i kept eyeing to see to <laughs> that was following the conversation because I really wanted to say something to this young girl, mm-hmm, so like, right? but I had I had bit my tongue because I was yeah, like, it's not wasn't your your, your thing. Yeah, yeah, it's not my business. But I really wanted to say something to this young girl because I I like I like being that kind of role model to younger people. So anyway, she was saying 
all these things. Oh, you, they may just use you for this one shoot. You, you could be really famous for like a month or like a year and then they'll never use you again. And that will be it. And you'll have to do something else for a job or something. Wow. Just, yeah. I'm not I does, That does not sound very attractive and fun. I know. Right. Like, what, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, just imagine you have this young, shy, probably the first time she ever shot in porn. You know what that lady is doing is trying head. to break her down. She she is one of those people. She wants to break okay. her down and make her feel like whatever that lady can provide for her, she better be fucking grateful because that's all she's going to get and that's all she can amount yeah. to. And without that lady, you know, she would she be nothing anyway. Though. So she has to like... Mm-hmm. trust whatever this old lady is saying is true and it's like you yeah were a I, know young what model. You mean. I wasn't a young model I started when I was 27 um and this ugly woman like yeah in her 50s was telling this girl um you know just whatever do the best you can because you may be like out of there next day so just make the money you want right basically she was going to turn over all these models so you can imagine her now, they always have this kind of imagination of this guy who's this pimp. But there's a lot of these crazy old oh, yeah. women who are these pimps, Yeah, women right? predators. They're out there. Right. And they're some of the worst ones because they make right. you feel like they're, oh, I'm going to protect a woman. I know what women need. I know what women feel like. I know how to mm-hmm. protect a woman. Well, they know that the young girl may look up to her. but yeah, they, know, they know how to manipulate a woman. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. So I felt bad for this girl. I wanted to say to her, this is what I wanted to say, because I kept like looking like this, right? Because <coughs> Reality Kings has like younger girls or they have the MILF, right? And I was in the MILF stage. And I wanted to say to her, girl, I mean, not this, you're going to be a MILF. I may not look that old to you, but I'm telling you, I'm the MILF age, right? I wanted to tell this girl that um, it doesn't matter what this crazy lady is telling you. Um, If you are, you know, have your head on straight, you can make your career last as long as you want or as little as you want. You Mm -hmm. can be in total control. You don't have to let these people tell you what to do. But it's kind of like when you're older and you're looking back at your old younger self and you want to like be that like person to like, she's going to have to learn it on her own. She's going to have to touch the stove and find out it's hot. Right. So Nisa, what would you tell um, as your experienced model self, what would you tell a new model that just got into or wanted to just get into the industry? Like not, not, not just, this or that but what you do specifically what would you tell them as advice i have i have given advice to many new models in fact Mm -hmm. um and i always tell them the same thing always reference check reference check everybody you're gonna i mean especially if you're gonna be on set you don't know what's gonna happen reference check Mm -hmm. if you don't reference check i mean you might as well seal your fate anything that happens i mean you could end up missing so how would, you tell them, a friend know. how would you teach them to reference chat? Like say, everybody I work with, reference. what I do, what mm-hmm. I do is I will ask the photographer or producer or model I'm working for, or whoever. I want to know three models that you shot with recently or worked with, or three producers you've worked with recently. Mm-hmm. So I can check on the model. Cause I reference check models as well. I don't okay. want anybody you crazy do? up in good my house. You. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, that's, this, that's true. That's crazy. good. I don't want somebody bringing drugs on my property or I don't want somebody that's going to be like a klepto and come to my house or he's going to be all fucked up and break (laughs) bring some kind of drama or like weird people to my house. Like I always, I'm very, we like our life here and we like to be comfortable and I don't want a bunch of weirdos over here. Good for you. Well, good for you. Actually, I didn't even think that way. I didn't even think about that. Um, So good for you. So you were a young model. How did you get into when it came into the fetish model and kind of before I met you? How did that happen? Um, well, I'd already done like fetish modeling photos. Um, I like, what do you mean somebody, like latex or just clothes? Um, like, like bondage photos. Oh, okay. So not like, yeah, not but latex. How did you enter? Okay. I found that person on model. model Mayhem or something. Oh, and okay. We just talked yeah. about photos. <laughs> they were local. I reference checked them. Ever since the beginning, I reference checked everybody. 
That's amazing. So, so it's been almost 19 years of so reference the, checking. <laughs> yeah, but how did you, did you Google them? Did you? Um, I asked them what models they worked for or oh, they worked yeah. with. And I, I email the models. I say, you know, I'm thinking of working with this person. Mm -hmm. What was your experience working with them? Are they timely? Are they professional? Um, you know, are they fucking creeps? Like, let's yeah. hear about it. Do they pay you the agreed amount? Um, you know, stuff like that, that you don't want to find out the hard way on the day of the shoot. I'm going to tell this little story. And the reason why is because when I first started um, modeling, I was lucky because I had um, an experienced model who I was totally a fan of. I was a big fan of um, Dragon Lily. Do you know who Dragon Lily is? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I still love that girl. Um, so Dragon Lily was at the time, my role model between Dragon Lily and Masumi Max. So when I first met, w when I first started to get together with Scott, um, and we were looking at, say, adult content, I wasn't interested in adult content. I never even looked at it before. And maybe PG stuff like um, something you'd see on TV or maybe something you'd see on, on a hotel, but nothing crazy. I never really was interested in it. One time I tried to to um, entice my boyfriend who happened to, I'd find magazines under his bed. So I was like trying to get a couple's porn. Other than that, I wasn't interested. So when, um, what do you call it? Scott introduced me to like this website, Dragon Lily, kink.com, Masumi Max. I was like, that was like blew my mind. I was like, wow, those girls are amazing. Plus, Asian girls, I was adopted. So I was I'm I was fascinating by that they were Asian. And I was like, <laughs> oh my god, I'm Asian too. <laughs> it was so <laughs> cute. <laughs> it's like I don't ever get to meet Asians, right? So, yeah. like, well, I should because I'm in Toronto. But the fu funny thing is, I grew up just outside of Toronto, so majority okay. of the people. That's weren't. how it was where, when I grew up. Like I grew yeah. up near DC and near Northern Virginia, where yeah. all the Asians are. But I was actually like 45 <laughs> minutes south in Fredericksburg, Virginia, where okay. there's no Asians. There's like two Asians that went to school with me. That's funny. Isn't it? Don't you think it's funny? <laughs> Do you it think is. it's funny? It's like, but it's like, it was almost like, it was almost like, I don't know any Asians because, well, I did know like the odd, odd one. Like I, I had a friend who the was odd one. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was in grade school, I had a girlfriend who was Japanese and then, um, that's it. <laughs> The one, the one Asian friend. <laughs> so it's my other Asian friend. And then, and then when I got, when I left my hometown, which was like just outside of Toronto, it was like a, about an hour outside of the city. I was so fascinated when I got to Chinatown and me and my sister, <laughs> like, well, because we grew up with like Oakville is very like Oakville is one of the richest places in, in Canada. So it's like also one of the whitest places yes. in Canada. So, what, me, so you have a cute downtown area, but it's not like eclectic and cultural. Okay, have you seen Oakville? <laughs> you, can Google it and you can Google it. It's like, it's like, have you seen the TV show Dawson's Creek? Oh, I remember you know, that. It yes. reminds me of Dawson's Creek, <laughs> <laughs> like where I grew up. Anyways, the point is, is like, the point is, is like when I got to Toronto, I remember I was so fascinating that, that I found a Chinatown and I was like, wow, there are other Asian people. Look at all these Asians. Except, except a lot of them in the stores, like the stores, I was like, yeah, I'm from Cambodia. And she, and I had this like Chinese <coughs> lady who's like, you don't look Cambodian. It's not your idea. I was like, what the hell? I was like, I can show you my passport. I was from Cam. I'm born in yeah. Cambodia. Why don't you believe me? <laughs> and I think because here's the you weren't Asian enough. You've been whitewashed. <laughs> no, I've been brownwashed because the thing is, is like a lot of Cambodians are a lot of. There's a lot of them that are lighter skin, like mm -hmm. kind of closer to Chinese looking. And and I was like, maybe I'm too brown because what happened right. is there are Cambodians who are from the village that the oh. kind of 
countryside. So I was born in the countryside. So I'm browner. So I didn't look <laughs> Kemb- I didn't look Asian enough for this lady. Right. You weren't white Asian. You're a tan Asian, brown Asian. Right. <laughs> That's not what she was used to seeing. Right. So Dragon Still Lily different. Me- Dragon Lily gave me the best advice. She said in in I feel bad in a way because I think it was because of experience <clears throat> because she told me because she was doing bondage modeling and she told me that you you should do like the references as as I as you were saying mm-hmm. but the reason why she learned that is because she worked with a guy who didn't allow anybody to um, chaperone her like a friend mm-hmm. or anything like that and it was the biggest it was a big mistake so she was tied up and he he passed her limits and the problem yeah and she felt horrible so now she and then since when i met her she told me to make sure that you keep all the emails you Mm -hmm. you say even if it's a test and you don't have somebody to come with you that you have to take a chaperone you have to take a friend because if you don't and you're tied up and you're in a bad situation the guy is very nice and this is also what happened to another friend of mine i have a friend who's also asian (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> who worked with me but i didn't know this happened to her until the end but what happened is the guy invited her to vegas paid for the hotel was taking it to avn we were hanging out with her she didn't tell us until we got to the airport and she started crying and she told me which she should have told me a long time ago, which I didn't know, is the guy who paid for her hotel totally took advantage of her and said that his wife was in the room next room and blah, blah, blah. He's not hitting on her. He just he's a photographer. And right. and basically he ended up taking advantage of her and asking for sexual favors every night. And oh she literally was like, no, no, F off, F off. But, you know, everybody has their limits and they break down at the end. And she told me what happened. I'm like, oh, my God, you should have told me all this time. Yeah, that but sucks. This is, whoa, there's a weird bug. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I pushed it away. <laughs> I just looked on the couch and this little bug's, like, crawling like this, a beetle. <laughs> Anyways, okay, enough about that. But the point is, is that is... What models don't know is they need to know certain things, mm-hmm. like to keep themselves safe. So Reference tell me, check. Yep. Tell me a little bit more, Anissa, about like your journey of modeling to fetish modeling till how you met me, even <laughs> and then past that, of course. So we we met originally at FetishCon, right? Yep. 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 Um, so I remember younger, you know. When I first started modeling, doing um, like fetish and bondage, who got me in the business was these two models. I was living in Columbia, Maryland, and I met, um, gosh, what was her name? What did she go by? I think she went by Jenny, Jenny Lee or something. Jenny Lee? Are you talking about a bondage, bondage model, Jenny Lee? Oh no, Jasmine, Jasmine oh, Lee, okay. uh, Jenny and uh, Lee? Mallory Knotts. Jenny They're... Lee, who was um, girlfriends or ex-girlfriend of Matt Williams, who was for with Kink Doctor. Ah. I thought you were talking about Jenny Lee. Go on. No, no, no. Uh, Jasmine and uh, Mallory, and they actually used to work for like in sex as well. Okay, um, yeah. So they actually got me to my first bondage video shoot. I had never, I had never done a video shoot and how I met her is like back in the MySpace days, like I had moved to Columbia, Maryland and I was a live-in nanny for a friend of mine, actually. Nice. Taking care of her son. I was a daycare worker too. Go on. Yeah. And I saw this girl on MySpace and I was like, hey, she's got pictures of herself tied up. I was like, I'm into bondage and I had not met any friends outside of like the friends that I had in high school because I was tying up my friends in high school. Are you serious? Are you serious? Because my friend was like that, but I never was like that. That's fascinating. (laughs) Because see, to me, I'm a performer. You were doing that to friends. Tell me a little bit about that because I would love to know. (laughs) I have a yeah. We would we would always have fun. It was like a power struggle. It was kind of like a game. We 
we weren't doing anything like sexual with it back then. Um, but I mean, later for me, yes. But in high school, it was just more like a game, really. But a game. We have like there's videos. Oh, well, my one friend had actually crazy. passed I don't think away. I played that game videos. in high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were crazy. We did all kinds of fun stuff. We played all sorts of games. <laughs> All sorts of reindeer games. Yeah, so, you know, like, my friends, my friends that I actually hung out with, when I got into the industry, it was no surprise to them, because I had talked about this in high school. Right. Now, people that didn't know me in high school, like, and people that have seen me at high school reunions since then, they're all like... (laughs) See, you're a natural-born kinkster. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know (laughs) lots of people who are natural-born kinksters. You are a natural-born kinkster. Kingster, because people will say, "What is performer and what is uh, your real kink?" Mm-hmm. So, what? Oh, yeah, because I do all sorts of stuff, but bondage well, is my favorite. Okay, so bondage. So, what would your like? What if somebody asked you describe your kink or what's your kink or whatever? Wh- how would you say it to somebody? I like rope bondage. Oh, hi. <laughs> I love rope bondage. I think it's great. I think it's fun. Let's see what you can do. So many different things with just a piece of rope. That's amazing. That's amazing. Can okay now, so you know from the other point of view, uh, my entry level was kind of like fear, which is really <laughs> really different than your entry level because what happened is, I think okay. First of all, my when I was in grade two, I, I can go back to when I was in grade two on the way to grade three. My first sexual ever fantasy was when I was around grade two, going into grade three in the summer. And I had a crush on one of my camp counselors. She looked like some blonde 16 year old right out of a horror movie. <laughs> now, psychologically, I didn't know where that came from until I kind of looked back at my life and my sister, okay, I had three older brothers and my sister and I grew up in the eighties. All the best horror movies were happening in the eighties. Yeah. And my brothers were watching them when they were teenagers and I was too young to be watching them. So I remember going like this, ah, ah and then running and then like I'd hear the noise. I was like, it was always the scariest noises. And then I, our ears sometimes we're like oh shit it's getting too scary you gotta close your ears and only watch exactly and then i'd go back to the horror movie and the thing is with me is i thought every time that i braved it it made me stronger right <laughs> so i challenged myself of my fear so if i have a fear i like to challenge myself if yes. i can o- overcome that fear then it becomes like amazing like it's totally different feeling. oh i know I've done, yeah, you know, like all the really hard, hard bondage we've done throughout the years. Coming out of a scene where it's really torturous, you feel like a champ. (laughs) You're like, I made it. That's right. Not only did I made it, I'm alive, I'm happy, and I'm getting paid. (laughs) Well, the thing is, is like like how some people might um, describe me, like family members, husband, mother they may call me a princess right and they usually usually call me a princess and so really like sometimes uh you know scott will tease me oh no no she's too much of a pussy she's not gonna like that she doesn't like that you know (laughs) the thing is is when i can overcome that challenge and be braver then i'm like i feel stronger like i feel Mm -hmm. like it's like i just overcame something big so what happened is with me and Scott, when we got together, yes, we were very sexual. We went to the adult store as part of our date. We we tried on, like, he had the remote while I had a toy on. We'd go on a date mm-hmm. night to the keg. You know what I mean? Like, we did all these crazy things. Now, when he first decided to get the rope out, I freaked out. <laughs> I freaked out. He's going to kill me. <laughs> like, I thought that the, the, the chance of me being... I thought I was going to panic. I I had like a psychological panic. Like it was a psychological thing. And he goes, okay, no problem. No problem. Do it to me. And I was like shocked. (laughs) (laughs) And so the next thing you knew. He's so awesome because he's a switch like that. You know, he's he's like, like, all right. Hey, man. Do it to me. Meanwhile, if you you need an easy (laughs) way in, 
Try yeah. it on me first. <laughs> exactly. The real reason was he wanted me to do it on him. Yeah. But anyways, he was like, because he didn't even stay there that long. He's like, no, no, do it to me. <laughs> anyways, I'm like, I would I'm never push the issue. Tie me up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, ready. <laughs> I, know, I know. No, no. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> So that gave me so much power and like so many people, like when I worked at my store, the couples used to ask me, how did you get into it? How do I get my girlfriend into it? How did I get my wife in it? And Mm -hmm. she might freak out, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, sometimes I tell that story is, is like, I was freaked out at the beginning and what he did was, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to push you. I, I, I say the, the introduction of it, but if you want, you can do it on me. So anything I would do on you, I wouldn't say that you can't do it on me. So basically, um, he, we went to the adult store and he bought me all this really cool dominatrix lingerie and like (laughs) high boots, like all this stuff. Like I'd never worn this before. Right. Mm -hmm. I never had it before. So we went there and he thought it was fun because he was dressing up like a little doll. Like he's 13 years older than me. Right. Mm -hmm. So he, so I had the high boots, I had whatever. And he's like, how about this? I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I was with us. Sure, motorcycle hat. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I've been in 1990. <laughs> like, you know. Like a chick. <laughs> right. So I was like, yes, yes. And then I had fun with him for a bit. And, you know, obviously I wasn't very good at the beginning, right? <laughs> because yeah, was, we all have to like, learn eh. somewhere. <laughs> I wasn't very good. So he actually took me to um, a professional. So she, in Toronto, they have this lady called Patricia Marsh. And I don't know how, how old she is now, but she was she was a lot older than me when I was there. And she was around when Scott was young. So he had actually gone there as a as a customer once when he was nice. younger. Uh huh. Like, oh, Marsh. hello, young man. Oh, it checks. No, she I didn't remember him. Again. I'm sure she, she had so many people. She didn't remember him. But he told me later, I went to her when I was younger. She doesn't remember me, right? And so she took me to be, he took me to be taught some skills. Oh, cool. And then eventually we went to like some other like um, kink workshops in town, in the fetish community. And we met some other friends in Toronto. And that's how it started to grow. Like where Darren, <laughs> you remember Darren, <laughs> first he and lord morpheus were the first people i first met out of just me and my husband just going into the industry and Mm -hmm. then we went to midori's course do you remember midori yeah she's awesome the book right we went she was teaching in toronto and we went to one one of her her classes classes and yeah we bought her book and we have a signature and everything from her and she did it with psychology and i was like you know this little like this little student was like, yes, use me as an as as example. <laughs> and she's like, okay. And then she used me as an example for the class. And it was so fun. And the next thing I know. He's a really I, good teacher. Right. And the next thing I know, Scott had empowered me. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He turned it all around. So I wasn't ever afraid. Like the trust level grew. And I was doing it on him. And then eventually I was like, now it's my turn. <laughs> You're like, all right. All right. I guess I've had my fun. Okay. Let's have a no, other I fun now. Yeah. Let me try and it. Switched. What and is then- it like down there on the bottom? <laughs> right, right. And that's how it grew. It, it switched. And mm-hmm. then as we started to shoot with each other, um, Basically, um, we needed other people, so and we eventually we met you. But you you still came in early from when I had first just started. So, oh, I didn't know that. I figured it, yeah. you guys seemed very like you've been doing it for a long time. Well, together we were doing it for longer, but professionally we were still pretty new. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I so, couldn't tell. <laughs> You're still in my like early days. You're my, I was like this. I feel like those were my early days too. Yeah, it was so. my early days too. I mean, I was doing I was doing whatever with my husband, but then mm-hmm. when we were doing with other people and having the production in the studio, that was still new. You were still in the newer days. Yeah. So that was fun. That was fun. But how did you know or start to work with us? I'm trying to remember. Um I want to say I met you guys 
I met Darren at FETCON and then he introduced oh, me to Fetcon. you guys. And then at, uh, at that point we had all decided like, okay, I'm going to come up to Canada and visit and we'll all shoot. And you guys were going to hire me to shoot. And I was well, like, that's all right. pretty adventurous of you to go to another country to go to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sweet, I'll see you up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's but hilarious. I was already traveling so much um, on my yeah. own, just modeling. So yeah. it was no big deal to me to go to Canada. Awesome. I had a passport, so I was ready. You are brave. Um, <clears throat> not only that, I thought, I thought you were brave. I thought you were fun. I thought you were hot. And then on top of it, I thought you were cool when you when it came to the time where I was going on to your customs or your shoots at FetishCon. I was like, I was kind of like a fish out of water, feeling like I'm in oh, I'm in Nisa's world now. <laughs> you and Nisa, what do I do? And you're like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. That this was always right. something interesting. <laughs> hey, don't worry, kick him the ball. Yeah, he loves it. Kick him. He loves it. And then I, I, I was talking to somebody about it, or I can't remember. I was talking online. Someone goes, oh, my God, how can you do that to somebody? He said, how can I deny somebody something that they love so much? I mean, yeah, you I'm see only it. making you him happy. <laughs> you see how much he loves it. He, he, if he didn't love he it, he would run away. <laughs> and I talk thing. to him all the time, and he's like, I can't wait to come back to the, the States. That's the thing. That's what get people don't understand. understand. They don't understand that they love it. They so love how it. can you deny it? You, mm. Kate, my husband's fun. It's because a win, win, way, win. Right. My husband's fun because the way he kind of puts it, he's like, every once in a while, he tells me, you're doing a great service to the world. <laughs> I was like, what? And he goes, you know how hard it must be to, because like, you know, some guys, guy, yeah, some guys like you. just jerking off. Yeah. For guys that like ball busting, and if that's their, you know, some guys want to watch porn and jerk off. For guys that want ball busting, it's not even like they can kick themselves in the balls. Generally. Yeah. So if they can hit themselves, they can try to do other things, but it's not the same as somebody else not kicking the them in the balls. Yeah. There's things that you can't just watch on a yeah. video and have it ha feel like. like I wanna, if I want to use my Hitachi and choke <laughs> myself, it's definitely not the same as. Tom choking yes, me. I and love it. Fucking me, you know. <laughs> it's not the no. same me dildoing myself and choking. Myself. Exactly. Exactly. Now, okay. So here's another thing. People ask me all these questions. <laughs> now, um, now because I deal with a lot of guys who like um, adult video and all that kind of stuff, what they say is, "What do you do to get yourself off?" So, what's the question for you? That's the question uh, for you. Well. What lady does not like her Hitachi? <laughs> That's what I don't I know anyone who doesn't Hitachi. travel with theirs. Everyone's got, I'm I'm got right everyone's got a couple quartered I'm ones. My arms and exactly. <laughs> you got your corded ones. You got your not corded ones. You got your ones for home. You got your travel mm -hmm. ones. Usually you travel with two just in case one breaks. <laughs> and you do you get caught in the airport? Like I've gotten caught with the airport. Mm -hmm. And they just like they they look at it, and I'm just like hee 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 hi. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say I have this really. I wonder where it is. Here, here it is. Your hair I looks good this. too, hey. You changed your hair. It's nice and brown. It looks good. Yeah, I I tried to dye it a long time ago, and it got really dark at the ends. And then since then, I've been trying to. Uh, I was trying uh, to get my hair like that too, but I was like not succeeding. Hold on, let me run in the other room real quick. Okay, I gotta get this mask because you're gonna yeah. laugh so hard. Hold take on. Your, okay, take your time. <laughs> Dang it! Where did this thing go? Oh wait, is it in here? <laughs> Lisa, what kind of lights are those that um, light up your back? Um, your uh... Philip Hue lights. Oh, I have, I have some. <gasps> oh, I don't have those. Yeah. And How do you describe app? those long ones? Here, I'll send you. I'll text you the link. Yeah, for send the me app. the link later because it, can I get it off of Amazon? I love your dress. I got mine on Amazon. Your dress is gorgeous. Thank you. It, you look amazing, by the way. You <laughs> always look amazing. You always you look, look amazing. amazing. I was like, oh, you look so nice. Where is it? I have this mask. <laughs> Ooh, I wanted to show you it, and it's so funny. Wait, okay. Is it right here. <laughs> 
Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. I don't know where okay, it is. What was well, it? I have this bondage one. Shut up! Oh my god, where did you get that? <laughs> At a sex store. That is the but coolest I, mask. I have this other one that's so cute. I didn't cute. even think of that. That's like perfect. I have this one where the circle is. Yeah, it has a picture of a vibrator in like a little lawn chair, and oh he's smiling, God. and then that it says amazing. "just vibing," just vibing. Dude, I haven't even seen any of those kind of sexual masks. Those are perfect. Next time I see one, I'll pick you up one. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, no, that's crazy because I, I was like, oh my god, that how perfect is that? I didn't even think of that. Like my brain didn't even go there. That's amazing. That yeah, is perfect. I saw them at uh, some sex store. Uh, I want to say they were like. 15 bucks or something it was cute and it wasn't too much expensive i was like all right okay nisa this is the other thing i want people to know okay nisa the other thing that i really like about you is i i admire how smart you are technical because i don't know if i just said that right but <laughs> <laughs> producing wise editing wise i find it fascinating i am just learning how to edit videos i mean scott has been doing it for so long and he does all that. And because I was I was working on my OnlyFans, I was starting to, because Scott was busy and he was doing certain things. I was like, don't worry, I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. It does, it's not even going to cost him very much. I can do it, blah, 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 you know, whatever. The thing is, is anything that he's going to do, he's, one, he's going to cost charge more. Two, he's usually really busy because he's editing a lot of video. And he, I don't know, he's always busy. <laughs> I don't even know what he's doing. He's I just know that he's always busy. Mm -hmm. Um and and uh so I said I want to start making like videos. So I just I started doing the free free video programming and then he just got me like uh this Adobe Elements to start learning, but Ooh. he does most of the stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm at the beginner stage, but what I always admired about you and some of the, my other model friends is that you guys, you girls, I should say, um, the, you do so much that people don't realize. You're not just a model. You know how to edit. You know how to produce. You know how to do all this stuff. Can you please tell, because I love to tell um, people the kind of women that I know that actually does like almost everything. <laughs> <laughs> so tell them what you do, not just your model you know how to do oh the yeah the whole stuff. on my actual job list you, the computer stuff like you know yeah. how to do this so when you do say for example somebody orders a custom you order custom i i came aboard i came over and i did a little bit of custom with you and then after you get that custom what do you do you have to edit um, I actually, because I just moved to Mac not too long ago, oh. I'm using a very basic, just the Windows Movie Maker for mine. Wow. But Tom is learning a new, oh gosh, I don't even know what program it is, but he's got a new computer and he's learning oh, some nice. fancy new programs. So I'm like, ooh, I think he's going to be able to do some special effects cool. and possibly green screen stuff soon. Oh, cool. So that would be really rad. Um, my editing right now is really basic though. No, but yeah. you, okay, okay. But from basic like, yeah, not, from the, the I was initial email. By you. Huh? Basic or not. Okay. I was impressed by you. So when you say, for example, somebody asked you to do a custom and I came over to your house and I mean, I'm not thinking about your behind the scenes or what you have to do. If I were a rich man. <laughs> If I were rich, see behind the scenes. We gotta get some lights up. Scott setting up. I'm wearing these sexy, sexy stockings of Nisa. So I gotta get these. These look awesome. And where are my heels? And then there's Nisa. She's setting up. I'm gonna be in bondage. <laughs> you look comfy. That's all that matters. <laughs> and beautiful. I'm doing whatever you say. Okay, Maxine, sit here. Hold this book like this. Be tied up. <laughs> we'll take some pictures like this. So what is it that you're doing behind the scenes that fans don't know? 
Well, I'm going to get tied up. Time to get tied up with a ball gag, handcuffs, rope, or that way. <laughs> okay, so you have to have like your legs spread out so okay. be on each side okay, of the chair. Right. Yeah. All right. And if you want, um, when we start, you can. The biggest fear yeah. is when someone goes to put clamps on me. I'm oh, yeah, that, definitely all the emailings to make sure the scripts are right. Um, I have fans sometimes that will ask me to help write scripts with them, and that takes some time, but, you know, I don't mind doing it. Then there's, like, okay, we got to set up lights, and we got to set up, make sure the lights make it look like we look good, not shadows just down on our face and, like, you know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> lights a big deal. Well, you I, always have a good, like, everything looks good. To me, it yeah. looks good. Yeah, try to make the lights good. Um, then there's the camera work, which I, I leave to Tom. Um, yes. rope work we got to make sure we have all the props we got to make sure the models in the outfit that we want it we can't make the outfit wrong <laughs> yeah, because here's the thing whenever i see you do like a custom even if i'm like okay i'm involved the corner of my eye i'm seeing you do like all this other stuff mm -hmm. and i can see you have your mind working and yeah, you we get to print everything yeah. out because i want to be able to see what's going on okay yeah. now we do this and we have the whiteboard to keep track of time markers yeah uh that's, that's been really, really helpful. awesome see people don't realize that a lot of the models um like models like you are doing stuff like that so it's fascinating to me because it's impressive. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing I want to, I want you to share is tell some people some of the fun fetishes, like, like say for example, um, customs that you've done that you want to kind of make a note of and, and tell some people or share some stories. Oh, okay. Let's think. We, I'm always, I always get really good customs. I feel like the custom clients that come to me, they're super creative. Um, let's see. So recently, uh, I, I have a custom uh, client I work with where he likes for, he likes me as this like villain character. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm very tricky and I end up kind of tricking someone into getting tied up a certain way. <laughs> and then I just start like kind of I'm gropey and grabby all over them. And they, their demeanor kind of goes from like, oh my god what are you doing <laughs> to hey stop it i don't like that to i'm serious stop and to where they're like desperate and like almost crying at the end and i'm not stopping yeah. it's really really gropey and so and i'm also manually forcing them to come and then yeah. tripling and you know what just... you're so good at like <laughs> that role play that you always do because i was envisioning like i was envisioning the scene right <laughs> You're really good at role play, whether you want to call you a, a good actress or yeah. what, you're really good at it. <laughs> oh, and then all the while, while I'm doing all this stuff to her, her upper half, um, the other model is squeezing her nipples and trying to milk her and then hooks her up to a milking machine. Oh, wow. <laughs> so poor girls struggling, get forced to come, getting tickled. Uh, getting milked at the same time and it's just pure chaos <laughs> that's so funny those are um, that's I have a client he likes to order a lot of these videos the milking part has been new introduced to it but um interesting yeah, we've been shooting a bunch of those and they're always really fun to do and we have a good time okay what is your favorite like like okay not just fetish for sexual but like what is your favorite to do for fun like fun for one of the customs um, the tickling ones are always fun because okay. it's really fun when I get to tickle somebody else because oh. I'm always the one getting tickled, which right. I mean, I love it. I love it. I have, um, one of my favorite custom clients is a foot tickling custom client. He's like a really good friend of mine now. Nice. And so I love filming his cause he, he's just so creative and writes these great stories. But for me to get to tickle somebody else is always like, it makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> oh, interesting. Interesting. A lot of it now, is so funny. Now, but what, what are common, okay. What are common custom, uh, oh. is that people do also, for you? A giant test is always fun to film. A giant. Mm -hmm. Have you done a giant test one? Yeah, I have. I, I, yeah. I haven't done it for a custom for myself, but I've actually done it for somebody who hired me to do it at FetishCon. Nice. So I've done that. Where to begin? Okay, so when I was working at the store. Hey, 
right. Can give us a tour. What's that? Go ahead. Okay, let me see. Coming in here, of course, we have the funny step, right? I almost thought I was going to retire. Yeah. So you know when you're like, I'm going to retire, and I'm just going to work at the store. Then all of a sudden, everybody wants to hire you. Yeah, they're like, wait, wait, wait. Last chance. <laughs> oh, my God. So as soon as I thought I might be retiring, because I was like, okay, when I started working at the store, I was about 35, thir around 35. And I was thinking, oh, I might retire. And then all of a sudden, I started working at the store, and then people wanted me to do um, in the neighborhood because they were like, oh, Maxine, she's she's an adult store who has a store. So then all the strip bars wanted me to do a feature thing. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. A feature. So I did stage shows. And that's no problem. I didn't want to do um, lap dances because I used to be a stripper when I was 21. And I didn't want to go back in that. It's it's weird. It's a it's a mindset. So. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's kind of like I left that. I don't want to go back to that. Yeah, you've already you had enough of doing that one. You want to try something new. I don't want to. I don't want to try to do lap dances. I don't want to try to hustle for money. So I'll do the stages. So I did the stage show. No problem. Pay me for the stage show. I'll sign some things. I'll sell some DVDs. No problem. Some people were like, "Can you do lap dances?" And I'd always say no. And and you know nicely, but. Right. I felt bad that they wanted one, but at the same time, I knew that's where my boundary was mm -hmm. because it's like stepping into the past where you wanted to move forward from. Yeah. So I didn't want to do that. So that's what happened. And then, okay, no problem. And then I went to AVN and I was just kind of promoting. And the next thing I know, I got a, a somebody going, oh, I thought you were tired. Oh, my God, I wanted to hire you for so long. And he was a guy, his name was LT, and he hired me for Oiled Up, which was, I'd say it's, it, it was my first official interracial movie, but it wasn't, like, I, I think I, I was with other people. It wasn't like the first time I was with a black guy, right, right? right? But I think it was kind of the official interracial, classic interracial like movie. The, the one that, that was advertised as your first Yeah, well, it wasn't advertised, but it was basically, I, I, for professional reasons, like I would say that would be my first. Mm -hmm. for 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 video but it was mostly me and angelina valentine and the funny thing is is um when i went there i, I went there because <laughs> i just came on the plane i had a baseball hat you know when you're in jogging <laughs> pants i know you too because when you're in jogging pants and you're just casual oh you don't, you're not the same anybody. right you're not no. the same. <laughs> Like, and I wasn't the same. So the girl was like, okay, she was getting her makeup done. She was all glammed up. And she was like, how old are you? So she literally thought I was too young to be there. Uh. <laughs> I was probably older than her, right? But I'm five foot one. And then as soon as I got my hair extensions in, my makeup on, my heels on, my was right. like, oh, okay, you belong here. <laughs> she was right in there. And we got along so well at that to the point where she did an interview and totally spoke highly of me so awesome that was awesome and then <laughs> after that i started working for brazzers three times elegant angel evil angel jewels mm -hmm. jordan reality kings uh you worked for times. everybody well like all the big names those those were the main ones there was one that i really wanted to work for it was um um bang brothers but in florida but they needed two u.s state id i got my Canadian passport and I got, um, my mom lived in uh, Florida and she had a condo. So I was like, mom, can I use your address? I'm going to get a, a Florida state ID. Hey, I could have voted, right? <laughs> <Just kidding. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Anyways, so I went and I got a Florida state ID. And I was like, mom, like, I can use your address. I get a Florida state ID. I get more work. She's like, yay, how much money? Yeah, she can see you more. Yep. So that's a question. How does your family deal with your industry? Um, I've always been super open with my parents about what I do. Um, they are happy for me. They are happy I'm doing... Uh, one, they're happy I'm happy. Two, they're happy I'm making my mo own money. I don't have to... Oh, nice. Yeah, ask them for money. Um, and I think How they... How do they understand it, though? Like, Because um, my mom, like, she... I, I, I don't give her details, but oh yeah, I don't give them details or anything. Yeah. 
But yeah, we've talked know. about my job many times and like I'll okay. vent to my mom about like, oh, this kind of stuff, that kind of stuff, but not go into any like gory details yeah, of the shoots like, or anything. Detail, but, but you know, cool. every industry has their like little yeah. things that you talk to your mom about. <laughs> so it's like it's like my mom would be like, Okay, I tried to explain it to my mom and my stepdad when we were in Florida and we were at their condo and I was like, you know, I do like have you ever heard of Betty Page or like, I was trying to like get like back in the day. Right. I was like, you know, a fetish model. And I showed like a picture of like some like classic fet. I don't know. Some classic <laughs> fetish model. And that's what I do. I didn't want to show like rope or right. anything. Right. Right. <laughs> so they're like, huh. And then, so the funny thing is, is whenever mm-hmm. I was with Scott and we were in Florida close to my mom's place at Pembroke, um, kind of that, that Fort Lauderdale area, there was this mall and he always got me these wicked heels. And we went to, um, um, the, what was it? Um, um, Victoria's secret. We went oh, to yep. Victoria's secret or something. And then we come back to the condo where my mom and, and stepdad was. And I'm like, look what Scott got me. And like this, all this cute lingerie. And my mom would be like, Woo, would you like to see me in this to my stepdad? And he's like 91. And he's nice. Like, oh. <laughs> and then my mom, my mom is hilarious. My mom cracks me up. So she went into her bedroom and she took these big underwear, like granny underwear. And she goes, how about these guys? <laughs> and I was like traumatized. She was like this. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he was like, uh, he's like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, mom, now I know, oh, now I know what she's wearing, and now I have to picture it. Fuck! <laughs> yeah, I'm picturing your mom in her underwear. <laughs> I'm, used, I'm used to my mom. I'm used to my mom, right? But my mom, like, I felt like she was totally traumatizing my my husband. Oh yeah, he was like this. <laughs> she's like, she should have like slingshotted at him. Any underwear, <laughs> and meanwhile. He, we, we got this other stuff. So, anyways, the point is, is that um, okay? I try to kind of say like about what I did. Like one time years ago, my sister said, my mom told her, "Oh, I think she's doing something other than just modeling. Maybe she's doing something else." And my sister goes, "What do you care? She's the one with the whip." That's what my sister said. <laughs> I was like, well, she's the one with the whip." <laughs> <laughs> he's doing know. something with that whip <laughs> are you kidding me you said that it was so crazy and so every once in a while i'd be like mom you know if i stay at your florida hotel i mean your florida condo <laughs> it work and i can make some extra money for modeling she's like cool and then she's like how much money did you make this time and i'm like mom i made 1300 dollars. i didn't tell her for what <laughs> yeah <laughs> You'll never guess what I did on your bed. <laughs> no. It was in a studio, but it was when I was looking for reality kings or something. Oh, yeah. You go away, come home. I modeled. <laughs> so so tell the fans, like, where do you work? Do you work just like a uh, fetish or do you do boy, girl? Do you do just girl, girl? How, what is your range? Um, oh, Sorry. <laughs> oh, I know we're talking long. We'll we'll cut it soon. No, it's okay. Um, I do mo- mainly bondage and fetish. There's a bunch of fetishes. Like, it's easier to ask me what I don't do when it comes to fetish than what exactly. I do, do because there is so there's things that I don't even know. There's fetishes just Are you evolving surprised? and happening and being birthed right now as we speak. You're still we're... surprised, basically. Yeah. Well, not. I'm not surprised very often, but I know that every second that passes, there's a new fetish developing somewhere, and I'm one day probably going to hear about it. <laughs> okay, let's go to the present. So the present is, is what is your typical thing that you get asked to do right now, like um, at, around now? It's always bondage or getting tickled. Bondage or getting tickled is the main thing. Interesting. Yes. I have moved up to MILF. I oh, I'm MILF like, too now. Oh, good. I know, isn't that great? <laughs> there we go. High five. High five. <laughs> One, two, three. High five. 
<laughs> I'm Dude, and you know what's great milk. is there's not a lot of Asian milfs, so we like oh, can really? dominate this category. Nice. And we're Asian milfs with big boobs. There, there you go. Yes, yes, that's it. That's it. I've heard that. Um, <laughs> so the thing is, is now lately I've been so asked so many times. I'm everybody's stepmother, mother, m- best friend's mother, neighbor's mm-hmm. mother. I'm it's all happening that. more often for me too now. I've Again. yeah, I actually made two videos. There's go what going all the way with your mom or no go going all the way with your milf next door. That was the name. Of the I got movie. I got the milf next door. Yeah. I, I here's the one that I get is like. Uh, either they're spying on me or I walk in on them and they're doing something, you know, or oh, they're like, oh, and, mm-hmm. and then, or, or let me help you and teach you for yes. your girlfriends. Mm-hmm. I get that one a lot. You're my favorite student, Carl. Don't tell anyone. Shh. Um, and the other things that I've been getting now, I don't know if you know this, but I did a lot of, they call it interracial porn. I always think it's funny because I'm as, as brown as some of them. I always think it's funny because I myself am interracial. <laughs> so <laughs> anything I do interracial, because I'm half Japanese, half Caucasian. I know, I know, right? <laughs> it That's doesn't matter I mean. who I do anything with, it's all interracial. Exactly. <laughs> well, I always crack up because, but it's weird though, because it's it like, Okay, those guys I totally got along with, but it's weird that it's a category because here's what they told me. They go like this. Some girls don't do interracial. I was like, why? Like, okay, well, they don't like, maybe they have maybe some bad reputation. Maybe they don't like the type. Okay, that's fine. I just thought it was, it was so kind of surprising, right? Yeah. And so they actually get... So I have a group of guys that that were like all black guys and they told me these little things like some girls refuse to to do them. I was like, oh, that's weird. I thought that would be like a cool thing. Yeah, I was going to say, is it because are are they scared like that their dicks are too big or something? Or? I'm actually not sure. Maybe the girl's scared that, that they're they going to get stuck girls. in like this monster cock and be like, I can't take it. That, that, <laughs> that somebody said maybe that was it. So mm-hmm. that's, that's true. Um, but they're not all. By the way, um, it's a myth. They're yes, not, not, they are not all. I've seen. I've seen plenty of the penises. Ones that I, are I have the internet, and they're not all the same. The ones they're not that are all big, huge. The ones that are big are big, but I've <laughs> literally worked with people who were like this big. Mm-hmm. I've seen and, some big ones where I was like, "Ooh, that probably hurts." <laughs> you know what? It's interesting because people ask me that all the time, and it's like your body, your body. Um, when that time comes, your body just opens up. It's really crazy. I think I think the ass yeah. opens up. My vagina that I don't does. think opens up. No, no, that up. does. No, it depends. Not it's the same as my ass. It's a psychological <laughs> thing then. It's a psychological thing. Because for me it both of it. But I guess if you're not into it or you're worried, then that can happen, right? Mm-hmm. So lately Well, it's like, you know, the the pussy, the canal is only so deep. You're like you're, you can't right. lose a tampon or a sponge in there, but, but if you shoved a tampon, a sponge up your ass, you could lose that shit. Right, but don't forget, like what <laughs> or place for the dick to go in the ass. <laughs> here's the thing that's different from a toy. A toy is solid, right? Mm-hmm. So it's solid, solid. It's actually easier with a human because yeah. your body actually is you like conform to up. it, right? And not only the person isn't staying hard. A person usually who's really big, they don't usually stay as hard as you think they are. Oh, they I know. softer, and maybe they they're longer, but um, yeah, the length is what seems like. Some people oh. say that's a lot of blood rushing to their body. Maybe they would faint, right, if it all rushed through through that body, right? Because that's oh, I don't know. Blood. Think about it that way. But when it goes in, it's it softens. It doesn't stay hard. It's like this. It's flexible. Mm. So the odd time you would feel this. That's very odd. That's not even on a regular basis. Majority of the time, it's a way. See, it's almost like a magic trick. It's like a magic trick. (laughs) (laughs) It's it was there and then it disappeared. 
<laughs> I don't know because sometimes I sometimes we'll be having sex and like if it's the angle is wrong, it feels like oh it yes. went too deep. I don't like it like That's- that. That's true. But it only happens here and there. So I guess I know what you mean. It's not like it's always happening. So so here's the biggest thing. When I first started, I was worried about that. So he, like, I had some performers who'd be like, just touch me if it's too hard, right? Yeah, yeah. Because he can the, make it look good without having to hurt you. <laughs> the, the, the only time that was like that is when you're mentally, it's all psychological. Mm-hmm. When you're mentally um, thinking about it, your body actually tenses up. And so you're tighter. So when you're more relaxed, so the difference is when I was doing the interracial stuff, I wasn't working for a company. That's the biggest thing because I am different when I'm working with a company and then when I'm different working with friends. Oh, like yeah. These guys ended up being my friends. So we would get a hotel rooms. We would get Airbnbs and we would mm-hmm. get all these people together and we would get booze <laughs> and they would <laughs> smoke if they wanted to smoke, right? Mm-hmm. And so people were having just a party. Anybody have the time? It's 4.47. All right, this is Don Prince with the sexy magazine. <laughs> he just had to shoot. It was so hot. I'm so wiped out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, I hear him laugh, though. When, when it happens, I'll, I'll film it next time. I have it. I had it a long time ago. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, he's got the best laugh. <laughs> So what's hey. up? <laughs> this is Wayne. Look at my eyes, Wayne. Look at that. <laughs> I thought I'd come in them. I had come in my tongue too, but mm-hmm. that's from the Gatorade. <laughs> they orange. <laughs> I had an orange Gatorade. <laughs> Gatorade had to quench her thirst. <laughs> what theme are we going to do? Besides the BBC Titans. <laughs> And when you work for a professional thing like browsers or something, you can't drink any alcohol. You can't smoke. You can't like you have to sign a legal agreements that you're totally sober. So Mm -hmm. to me, it's like, it's, it's like, okay, I'm more insecure. Like I'm usually like more, I'm self-aware and I'm like, am I doing this right? And I, am I insecure? Am I showing, Oh my God, I feel like I feel overthinking it. Yeah. When I work with friends, I am less insecure and more like just having fun and my body isn't as tense and it takes yeah things are more natural way, yeah way more it's almost like you're at a swinger party you're just mm-hmm. partying you know what i mean that's what it's like but if you are um doing it and for a professional and you're thinking oh everything oh that's to me it's harder to me like i loved working for professional companies but I also hated it more <laughs> because I couldn't totally be myself and I, right. and I could be as relaxed because I can be really insecure or self-aware if, if I'm thinking that way. But if I'm with friends and we're just like, Hey, we're at Airbnb house. Like the last day we're like, what should we do for the last shoot? I had the idea. So I was like this, let's do a fucking big gang bang. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let's have the pizza guy. Somebody come there and he's a pizza, like 70s mm-hmm. stuff pizza. And then the next thing you know, it turns into a huge group party. Yeah. Exotica 2019. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they're here for the game. <laughs> What's up, Wayne? <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Hey, knock, knock. I'm looking for the owner. I got some pizza, <laughs> sausage, pepperoni. Yes, I'll take some sausage. Which one? <laughs> oh, anyone you want to give me. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, hold on. Let me get this by the door. Yeah, what kind of sausage do you have? I'm good. <laughs> what kind of sausage do you have? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, something really meaty. <laughs> And then it got you just inviting more pizza guys from all the local pizza shops. Pizza? I need some more pizza. Oh, look, I found another pizza guy. Let's call him too. (laughs) The funny thing is, is I don't usually give those ideas out. Like usually, dude, that's a new idea. You should do that one where you call all the different pizzas. 
Oh, we, oh, that's a good idea. No, that's yeah, with all idea. the different pizza guys, so you have to get like a Pizza that's Hut shirt, good. And no, Domino shirt. That. And yeah, you're right. Caesars you're right. Or... <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So, so this is what I what I gave the suggestion, and then all, the rest of the day everybody was talking, and then it came back to me. Somebody goes, "Hey, somebody has this idea," but I was like, "That's what I did." So it literally came full circle. Nice. <laughs> back to me. Like and I was this like, idea. That's my idea. And I was so proud. I had a freaking idea, right? And then they had like some drones, like above on the top floor. Oh, cool. Like blue above, like it was a full on wicked party. And it was the last of it. Like, oh my God, we were having so much fun that I don't even remember it. It was just like, <laughs> so fun. And, and that's when it's great. That's mm. when it's like, to me, it's like the best. So because I did so much of that porn, now I get race play. Have you heard of race play? Oh, there's so there's so such a big difference between just doing internet interracial and everyone's having a good time. And then you get over to race play work. It's just a little uncomfortable. See, it's uncomfortable <laughs> to you. It's uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable to you. Me. But the difference is for me. But they love that, it. The guys that want that, it, they love it so much. Have, see, see, I, I had another girlfriend. Um, She told me the same thing. She's she's like Canadian. She's white. And mm. so I, I see that it would be more sensitive to her because she would be worried about it more. But she mm. says, am I doing something wrong? And I said, like, no. And I explained to her about the fetish world. I it was just like, sucks to watch people get dragged and, online. If a guy wants you to kick him, kick him in the balls. Is that much? It doesn't make me a man hater. Right. Does that make it much? You're only giving him what he wants. He's pleased. Mm -hmm. If he's asking you for this and they are different, they're different from each other. They're not all the same. So if you, and she was like worried about it and she goes, isn't it going to be like um, making it bad for racists? And I'm like, okay, usually the guys who want that race, want it, want you to talk about their race and that's when they're jerking they're, off to they're, it. They're not talking about the opposite race. They're, yeah, they're no. black guys. So they're the asking you to do it to them. Okay, so think of it this way, because me and my friend David was talking about it, like, he was like, telling me like, where did this come from? Like, where does the like, um, you know, the stepmom come from? Where does the race play come from? And I said to him, I said, Okay, think about it this way. It's taboo right now. Mm -hmm. So you got taboo. So, so those guys are usually not much younger than I am. They're either my age or younger who want it. So mm -hmm. they grew up with the hip hop music, like the MTV, much music, whatever, hip hop music was going on. And they said the N word all the time. Mm -hmm. They're not asking for um, you to be like hateful. And maybe they trust you enough, right? Because they trust right. me because they know I work. The guys who are my yeah. fans. They know you don't care. actually hate black dudes. <laughs> you have tons of like friends and coworkers. It doesn't and even matter. They know that you they know you're not that a racist it's, person. They know it's role play. So yeah. they know it's role play. That's the key, right? Mm. Doesn't matter if they yeah, know it's, it's role play. It's a game. It's a fantasy. No, it's role play. But usually those guys are are already fans of those movies I've been in, right? Mm -hmm. So then he's like, "Can you call me the N word over and over?" And I was like, yeah, dude, of course, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, he's like this. He's like, okay, I go, just tell me how you like it. Because I actually have a lot of people who like it. But you have to tell me which version. Because they are submissive versions. Yeah. Or just regular guy versions, right? So the submissive versions is kind of like um, um, femdom. Think okay. of it like femdom. So he, um, it's cockled kind of femdom. Right. Okay. So so now, by the way, some of these guys who say they like to be told that they have a small dick. Yeah, they, they have got big ones. Really big dick. <laughs> but vice versa it could be the mm -hmm. vice versa. Right. Yeah. So so it doesn't matter. It's all about role play. So so, for example, this guy said, OK, can you just tell me 
I can't use your, it's too small. By the way, this guy is like enormous. And <laughs> it's almost like it buggles my mind. I have to go You're like, okay, oh. if you, if that's what you want. <laughs> like, you are too small. And I'm just like, holy shit. You're like, you're too small. I get all the way back here. And my computer's across the room. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to go like that. You, but it's role play. See, mm-hmm. it doesn't even have to be reality. Yeah, yeah right? it's just That's me being something. a meanie. Yeah. Right. But mm-hmm. then this guy, because he likes femdom, he likes femdom. So he likes to be like, he says, Can you say that you want to cheat on me and have sex with a. Yeah, oh, he's a cock. Yes, but they're not oh. always white. No. See, people they come think in every they're color. Always white. <laughs> People the think rainbow of cucks. <laughs> they, they think they're always white. They're not always white. Oh, so he no. Is. He's totally is. So anyways, so I get that guy. And I have another one who likes it like where it's pleasurable. Oh, I love your BBC, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So he gets the other one. And then you have the other one where it's like, I don't want that fucking stupid, stupid end cock. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, and it goes the opposite. And yeah. so look. I'm cool. You just tell me how you like it, babe. <laughs> yep, yep. You're an actress. You're going to read the script and go, okay, then I'm going to give it my best shot. <laughs> but don't forget, I've had the other way where they go, I had people hire me for the Asian stuff. And oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'm I put on a Chinese dress so many times. Did I'm you? not Chinese. <laughs> I, I'm never going to be Chinese, but you know what? On camera, I will be whatever Asian you want me to be. The thing is about you, you remind me of me because the <laughs> funny thing is, is like you're so Western and so I'm so Western that they're like this. Can you speak in your language? And I'm like, English. I, I, I don't even know the language. <laughs> I literally had to go on like I Google it, Google Translate. <laughs> It's like, how do you say hello in Cambodian? And I'm like, Sham we su. And I'm like, I started like learning some like Cambodian and I <laughs> and I started saying it for somebody. And then and then the other thing is I couldn't think of it. So I kept saying, We love you long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can get away with that. Oh, he loved it. <laughs> Yeah, I had a custom guy. The very first thing, the very first sentence of the custom email he sent me was, yeah. okay, I want you to first say something cute about your feet in your native language. And I'm like, I'm guessing you mean Japanese I that. because I'm American and I You're speak so English. You're so American. But I will Google something for you because I know that's I'm what I did. An actress, and I'm going to say something cute about my feet in whatever you think my native language is going to be. Which is I know that's, that's exactly what I did. That's why I, I know what he people. wanted from me, and I was going to give it to him. I was like, I was like this. Uh, give me a little bit. I have to Google it. Actually, I only know English. <laughs> And then I was like, I Googled, like, how to say this in Cambodian? How do you say this in Cambodian? Yep, that's exactly <laughs> what I did. And luckily, nowadays, too, they have the um, that little sound button. So if, like, you don't yeah. know how to pronounce it good, at least right. you can try to copy it. Copy I got it Google, Google how they Google say Translate. it. Mm-hmm. I got it from Google Translate. Yep, Google Translate's okay. the best. All right. Well, I'm going to – let's close up because it's long. But I want to totally let you say anything that you want to promote or your links. And then you're going to oh, yeah. send me your links later and I'll post it with it. Okay. But I want you to, for a con- conclusion, anything you want to tell everybody. Well, for one, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. This was really fun. And I feel like it's been so long since I've seen you. It's been like 2019. So this, always great. No, I love to see you. Um, <laughs> Everyone can find my clips at nisasneverland.com. Um, also, check out my our second store, boundorgasms.com. And I'm on um, I'm on all the good social medias. <laughs> okay, but my so favorite is Twitter. Never, usually. Yeah, Nisa Nevers uh, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I have OnlyFans. I have Loyal Fans. I have an all my links. If you just search yes. my name, you will find me. You can't okay. hide from me. And then perfect because, and then you're going to give me the links and I'll yeah. post them. Um, so I'll connect it. So nobody has to try to like, just try to figure it out. I'll give the links that whatever links you want, want, want to give out, you tell me and stuff okay. like that. But that all my links, 
All my life. I just I just started that because I saw Nisa did it and I was it's like, great, that's right? Brilliant. I know. I that's a great link to share because literally it's everything. Like all my links. And on top of it, uh Facebook used to remember. always flag me and other things uh-huh. used to flag me if I put OnlyFans or if yeah. that they didn't like. Yeah, Instagram it just uh shook the finger at me again and took down a bunch of different things. Yeah. Facebook has not popped me for the OnlyFans yet, but you know me, I'm always in Facebook. I jail. got flagged every time I put OnlyFans. Only fans, so be careful. You have you have more Facebook pages than anybody I've ever seen make Facebook Dude, pages. It doesn't exist all at once. I can. And then I feel like I've been in Facebook them, jail more than gone. anybody. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, I'm like, oh, she's adding me again. I don't know how many times I've asked you, like, is this you or is someone pretending to be you? Because you the, the she's trying to add Rotha me Chap? again. <laughs> Do you see the Susan Rotha chat? Yeah, I was like. Was that her original name when she came from Cambodia? I was like, that must be it because I was like, this one is definitely a a bot or a fan if it's not her, unless that's her original name. Oh my God, it was so (laughs) funny. So my sister is laughing so hard because she's like, did you run out of names to use when you get deleted off of Facebook? I was like, I've used my dog's name. I've used all the (laughs) versions. What are they deleting you for? Uh, well, they say it's for inappropriate stuff like nudity. And the one they flagged me for nudity was a picture of me wearing my pink dress on my birthday. And my cleavage is like this much. And they said it was nudity. Oh, uh, second- someone's just messing with you then. No, second, I think it's because of politics. Oh, absolutely. Someone doesn't like your politics, so they're trying to, like, flag all your pictures that might be risque. Exactly. Because the ones they flagged me for, there was no nudity. So I got flagged for nudity all the time, and there was no nudity. Mm -hmm. Tom, (laughs) hi. You want to see Tom? Yes. Hi. I miss him. Morning. Tom, I miss you. Oh, you look sexy. How are you? Shirtless, Tom. <laughs> look at this Hi, dragon. Tom. Tom, I miss you guys so much. So when I the coronavirus happened and I was like, damn, I can't even go to Florida. So that's the only place I care to go to, to see you guys and to do my shoots or whatever. But Florida is it. I don't care about any other place. Okay, <laughs> fun in Vegas, but Florida. Well, make sure you see us when you come. I love Florida. So yeah, um, when do you get to come to Florida next? Yeah, are you hey, playing? Or are you going to? Sleep? I think you guys are open, right? So hey, you guys are hey, still wait. open oh, okay. in Florida. You Hold on one second. Open. Hey, babe. Yeah. Is has it, the internet been working good? Working Mine's working fine too. Okay, we're just oh. trying out a new internet. So oh, we, really? we hooked up all our things. We hooked up Alexa. We hooked up oh, his PlayStation. Fun. We hooked up Alexa. my computers because I was like, I want you to play your video games online with yeah. your friends while I'm streaming and doing podcast video chat. And if there's so, no interruptions, that's the better internet. Okay, so Scott got one of those, uh, what do you call it? The thing that kind of amplifies. Oh, oh, I know what you're Not talking about, or an extender or something. He, it, whatever it was, he changed our internet, like, because we have a lot of concrete in our house. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you have to get a, a Wi-Fi extender, otherwise, like, you can get it in the one room you're in, yeah. but you won't be able to get it in the next room or and downstairs. Our whole, whole house is made of concrete, so from one yeah. floor to another, it was like, our YouTube was really slow, and then he got that, and it totally changed everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. We we have um, Xfinity, but the AT and T guys came over the other day and was like, "Oh, we got fiber optic, which is the best." And we we're like, "Okay, we'll try it out." You have fiber optic? Mm-hmm. What's it like? Because Scott wants it fast, so Scott fast, wants it. so He's fast. He, if he hasn't had it yet, it's like well, the Dominican. It's like trading in, like you know, everybody. You get used to whatever internet you have, so it's like trading in the car you have oh. for a Lambo. <laughs> would totally be in love faster especially scott you know he does all the uh work online uploading mm-hmm. and downloading and this they and that be slow, so it's oh my god faster but i don't know what they got down there i mean when we were living in belize we were we paying for have, the most expensive internet it. and that shit was slow 
No, Scott is dying to get fiber. He goes on about like, oh, they're going to maybe build this fiber optic here soon. <laughs> and I'm like, he keeps saying like soon, soon. And I'm yeah. like, oh, all I know. That's I his white like, unicorn. He's chasing yeah. the fiber optic. <laughs> I don't even know about it. All I know about it is he mentions it. <laughs> yeah. What? When he gets it. He knows he's been on it before. If he, you know, he's, I'm sure you know, he notices the difference between uploading there and then uploading in the States. Yeah. And then and he'll, he'll definitely notice if we go to a place that the internet's really fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to keep you any longer, but I really want to thank you for doing this. Cause honestly, I love you. And I wanted I to get too. into podcasting and like, Everybody who asks me who is my favorite model to work with, I always say Nisa. Aw, thank you. Not You're my favorite question. too. It's, it's just, I have so much fun with you. And I also think you're one of the coolest out of all yes. the models. Thank you. Well, you are also one of the coolest. <laughs> you know what, honestly, I'm just, I miss those days, eh? Before COVID. And like, I even know. like, remember that video I just posted as like my intro and then you, you and me and then oh, yeah, like, we're... Snapchat tech classes. I know. <laughs> just hanging <laughs> out at FatCon. <laughs> Well, they, they moved it to okay. FETCON 2022, so put it in your calendar, FETCON 2022. It's going on. Well, cross your fingers. We don't have any restrictions. You're in Florida, but I have restrictions. Right. Hmm. Well, hopefully I get out of Canada. <laughs> Dominican isn't as strict. Okay. Canada is very strict. Yeah. So that's a big difference. Canada I was actually surprised when you were talking about the 14-day quarantine because down here now, it sounds like they've said that you could do a 10-day quarantine instead down here. Like things well, have lightened up in all different areas now. Look, man, I, I have no problem being at home. I, I play on my computer a lot. The problem mm -hmm. is, is I had to pay almost $2,000 for the friggin' hotel, three tests. And I had so they make you pay for the hotel. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they I make you pay for the hotel. Paid for it. And I would have done it because I honestly said, I'm not coming to Canada until it's lifted. The only reason why I came to Canada is I'm Family. not going to not come to Canada if there's an emergency. Right. My sister was the only one close in Toronto, and she also had interviews. She stayed the week, but I was like, I'm going to come there. I'll relieve you. I, can, I don't have any kids or whatever. I can stay there if I need to. A long time if i'm if if not i can at least relieve you so you can go yeah. for your job interviews you know my sister she was out of work so now she's trying to get a job again yeah um, so i mean a lot of people they, all they want to do is just get back to work honestly i we're lucky if we can work online but i mm -hmm. i don't it's not like i don't feel for people who don't work online yeah, no, there's a lot of people that were not able to work, and it was yeah. scary for everybody. I'm grateful that we have online jobs and we were able to make it work. But even at the beginning, I was supposed to go to Michigan and do a big, big uh, shoot tour there and make a bunch of money, and I had to cancel the trip. I was like, you know what? I don't know what will happen if I go and get stuck. Yeah, or at the same time, we didn't know what was the virus. So yeah, like, we didn't know work? what how we I wasn't going to work sick. with anybody. Yeah. I wasn't going to work with anybody. Okay, fine. Like I wasn't you know, going to an airport, that's for sure. I was yeah. like, hell no. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't going to do any kind of contact like with anybody mm -hmm. if I didn't know what it was. Like Literally at the beginning, I was watching those videos that were coming out of China where people were dropping in the streets and in the hospital. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? It's like 28 days later. It's like the zombie movies. I was like... Exactly. <laughs> So you don't know. You didn't know at the beginning. Now I'm like, okay, done. I'm done with the lockdown. Let's finish this. You know, <laughs> yep. everybody do what you have to do, whatever. But people are losing their business. People are starving. Industries are dying. Mm -hmm. You know, kids are committing suicide. They're not <laughs> in school. I don't like that. But you are in Florida. So... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like that. For us, it was like, oh, man, there was one point during the pandemic yeah. Where they closed the beaches in our town, and we were like, 
oh man, this really sucks now. <laughs> But oh, they opened it right everybody, back up. Everybody around the world, like you go to New York and you talk to people in California, they had it way worse. Yeah, like it's like a ghost town in all of New York City yeah. and in Florida, everyone's like, hey, well, nigger. It's really Hi. violent there right now. It's bad in New York. Is it? The violence, they, they let out, just so you know, they let out prisoners for COVID. So rapists, oh, violent criminals are more out on the street in New York and just um, let them out. California Shit. and some in Vegas. Uh, so I would I would steer clear from California and I would steer clear from um, um, California and New York. Boom. Not going there until things are better. Yeah. It's not good there right now. I so won't be going anywhere. anywhere. I'm, I'm stuck here for a while. Got You're me. in Florida. Yeah, oh, here in Florida. That's, the Florida. First, babe, that's the first place I'm going. Well, if you want, come on down. I got a guest room. You're welcome to it. <laughs> well, Dominican and Florida are only 90 minutes away. Yeah, maybe on the way home, you have a layover for a couple of days in Florida. <laughs> well, all I can tell you is when things are clear and it's all good, Florida would be the first place I would go. Not anywhere else. Florida. <laughs> and it's a quick, easy flight. All right. Well, I love you. And I, I want to tell too. you, thank you so much. And I hope maybe one day we can do this again. Yes, me too. Okay, we'll just say goodbye, everybody. Oh, whoops. It's You're okay. Record again. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm recording again. All right. Goodbye, okay. everybody. Bye, everyone. <laughs> thanks for joining the podcast. And thanks for hanging out with me and Nisa. We'll talk love to you. you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> And now we'll stop. Oh yeah, that's cute. It's a beautiful dog. <laughs>